years ago, we had just dropped anchor in the capital of a coral atoll. We were there to leave our sailboat brick house for two months while we flew back to the US. The problem is we had just heard that eight other boats, cruising boats, had recently been broken into. So what to do? We had to set up deterrence. One thing that we do on a daily basis anyway is to leave sandals on the side deck. That always makes it look like somebody's at home. And if some thief decided to take these sandals, they can have them. It's a donation. The other thing is to hang laundry up as though it's drying. The third thing that we did was to leave a bright LED light burning inside the cabin as though somebody's home. It would be burning all 24 hours a day, but those lights use as much energy as probably <laughs> the ship's cat Lily. Right, Lily? Hey, hey, wake up. The fourth thing that we did, the fourth thing that we did was turn, was turn on the uh, stereo. Ow, ow, hey, quit biting my foot. <laughs> we turned it on to the local station and turned the volume way up so you could hear it well off of the boat. I mean, doesn't everybody turn their stereo off when they leave the boat? So at least it made it sound like somebody was at home. On the stern arch, we have a 360 degree anchor light. And when we left to return to the U.S., we had removed the uh, cockpit awning so that this light not only spread across the boat, but also into the cockpit along with this photosensitive light. Actually, unfortunately, these aren't available anymore. The company went out of business. Light underneath that shines down into the cockpit. So at night, the boat was well illuminated. We left this anchor light on and the one at the top of the mast. They used such little energy that the solar panels had no problem at all keeping up with the energy demands of these anchor lights and the stereo running 24 hours a day. So when we went away, we took off our heavy locks and put on these little luggage locks. Other boats that were broken into were pry barred apart. They destroyed the forward hatches, lifting them up so that the dogs were broken. And so we figured if somebody's gonna break into this boat, I wanna slow them down, but I don't want them tearing the boat apart. So we've just put on these little luggage locks, uh, not only on the main hatch, but on the two cockpit lockers. Fortunately, we never had a problem. They never got that far to start breaking in. They figured that they were going to just lift up the dinghy. These people were experienced. They broke into at least eight boats. They could lift up the dinghy and they knew the hatch underneath would be open for ventilation. And that's what stopped them. Whew, that even hurts my ears. But I'm just finishing up the installation of this alarm. I'll mount it up here somehow and put an awning over it to help keep the water off. This is replacing this alarm, which was mounted higher up just below the, the radar dome. And that alarm saved us. It kept burglars off of our boat. Whoa, whoa, oh, that Rebecca scared the heck out of me. But <laughs> this is the material, um, just some, some umbrella that I just draped over it. I think, you know, it doesn't look factory finished and that's for the better. It's uh, nice and camouflaged. It'll help to shed the water away from the horn, even though that horn is supposed to be waterproof. Uh, they never last that long. So we're good to go on that one. This is the mouse trap, the protected brick house from the biggest rats the thieves that were trying to break into our boat. You can see here there is an electric line attached to the wood part of the trap and another connecting line which is soldered to the wire frame. When that trap is tripped, it closes, makes the connection and sounds off the alarm. We had three of these. One was in the Ford Peak and the trip line right here was attached to the hatch in case that was opened. We had another one set in the main saloon and the trip line would go up through the main hatch and attach to the handle of the dinghy which was turned upside down and stowed there. Then we had this one in the aft just sitting on the companionway steps 
and this line went up and attached to a screw in the upper slat. So if somebody pulled it, it would set off the trap. Make and, the, and the loud alarm would go off. The alarm was so loud, it woke up the whole anchorage, the waterfront, and another a mooring area about a mile north, all of those boats heard it. It went off, the thieves jumped in the water, our cruising friends jumped in their dinghy at 2.30 in the morning, and the guys disappeared. But in any case, our boat was saved. This is our latest burglar alarm. This is a 110 decibel alarm. It's powered by a 9 volt battery that sits in this case here. It's very effective, very loud. This is the trip mechanism. Pull that, it makes the contact of those two screws and it'll scare the heck out of any thief. I'll set this up on the uh, top of the coach roof, hook this in somewhere, put a rag over it. This stretches across to the lifeline or any place else that a thief might go when he passes through. It sounds such a big alarm, it'll scare the sandals off of them. Too often, when you go to a, a store to buy some kind of burglar alarm, those things aren't any louder than a frightened canary. These are effective. One problem is soldering these wires onto the top of that screw. It's very difficult. I end up melting half the time the whole clothespin assembly, and I have to start all over again. A better way is to just go ahead and put your screws in, make them just long enough so you can put a nut on the top, put ring terminals on the end of your wires, and you're done. Except for, of course, all of the hot gluing of the rest of the parts. Well, hopefully some of these ideas will help protect your own boat while you're out cruising. If so, please give us a thumbs up and a subscribe, and we hope to see you soon.